Howdy. Last time you saw us, we were wrapping up steelwork for the shop. Got it all ready to get painted. It's all sitting cozy in a pile and waiting for its moment. Um, from there, we quickly moved into rearranging the, the space. The whole shop level had been used as sort of a storage yard for shop materials and other things that we didn't have another place for. So it was time to start getting it into uh, shop mode, moving piles and moving a building. Moving, moving day again. This is the tool shed that Craigslist built. Um, this was the first little structure that we built on the property uh, five years ago. So it has held up quite well for all of the abuse that we have put it through. It is really built out of uh, material that I got either for free off of Craigslist or from uh, people that I know getting rid of things. Um, and just leftovers from from other projects so uh, i'm trying to stay uh, in that same uh, mode when moving it when reconfiguring it to be the permanent tool room for the shop i'm just really working out of the scrap pile to uh, make this little uh, building work so let me set the stage for you. Five years ago, we were staying with Nick's brother in town in Boise, which is the big town near here. Sadie was just a few months old. I had actually given birth to Sadie without my own home. Um, of course, the, the birth happened at a birth center, but um, we were staying with, with other people when that happened. And Nick drove in um, with the four-wheeler to our new property, our place that was going to be our dream home location. And he brought in piece by piece the things he needed to build this first building. I wasn't even with him at first. He slept in a tent with a sleeping bag while the kids and I stayed in Boise. Um, and then when I did come up, I just laid Sadie on a sleeping bag and kind of looked around and watched him and was just amazed and overwhelmed by everything that we were uh, undertaking. So this building was the first mark of the Fouch family on this place. We have to uh, rebuild the the roof structure because of how it's going to attach to the shop. It's going to have uh, a single slope roof uh, that is sort of a continuation of the of the shop roof so that means new trusses or rafters or whatever I come up with um, so it made sense to us to just take the whole thing apart and move it without machinery Take your end and put it in the tree onto the branch, right there, yes. So just hold on right there for a second, okay? Okay. So we're not going as far with this one. Okay. We're going to just go over by the four-wheeler. See, I have that board hanging out? Yeah. We're going to stand it there. Okay. That one has a great big tree holding it right now. Perfect. And then that last one has a little brace on it. So it'll stay with the platform until we can come back and get it off of there. Okay. We kept kids sort of out of harm's way, but in those support roles. So Stella was able to sort of have the bracing uh, right where it needed to be in order to catch those walls. Uh, Milo ran the camera a lot of the time. Uh, Sadie just uh, sort of stayed safe and was our cheerleader. Um, 
these are too big and heavy to depend on kid power to uh, not have a problem. Nick was a little stressed out by this move. It makes him nervous to use me as crew for obvious reasons. He likes me and I'm not that good at some of the things that we're doing. We built it originally um, carried up here kind of stick by stick so um, I never had to move a wall all complete. You know we we put up the stud walls and, and sheathed it in place. Um, I used mostly screws because of what I had available to me at the time was, you know, a battery screw gun. Um, so uh, it came apart really pretty easily into its separate walls and whatnot. But each one of those walls and the platform was heavy. It was a short move. We tried to play it safe as far as keeping the walls just standing up, not laying them down, so we had to stand the whole thing back up again. Um, we had temporary braces set up so that um, we were minimizing the amount of effort we had to put in even though in the end it was quite a bit of effort. So we were able to move the walls, um, you know, we were able to manage moving the walls uh, just by ourselves. We moved them off of the platform and had them temporarily braced up while we then they just stood there while we were able to move the deck uh, inch by inch into its permanent home. Uh, we never really picked it up necessarily. We never had all four corners floating, but we used the big steel bar and some other levers and uh, pieces of wood on the ground in order to slowly scoot it into its home. Um, and I think it, it really works relatively well. It was a nice slow move. We were deliberate about it, knowing where we wanted to land, um, and just sort of made it inch by inch. My mood always changes. At first I'm kind of nervous and the walls are really big, and especially the deck really heavy. But by the time we had gotten the uh, the deck further on, I was joking around and uh, and calling myself Wonder Woman as I lifted a corner of the deck. So it's a great confidence builder to engage in things like this, even if you think you're not the type, even if you think you don't have the skill set or the ability to do these kind of huge projects with a good teacher and leader like Nick. I can do a lot more than I think I can and it's incredibly satisfying. So we struggled through getting the platform set up. I have it as secured as it needs to be and now we're putting walls on. It makes me really happy that it has a permanent um, function going forward that some of the things that we did when we first started out have had staying power, have lasted, and are becoming part of our legacy here on our land. So it, it was kind of a stressful move, getting everybody involved and it being such a big, heavy thing that we were taking on without outside help. Um, but it actually, you know, it all pretty much happened in a day. And uh, so, it was a really quick transformation of the space. And it was the first time that I got a look at what the shop driveway is gonna look like. So what the front approach of that space is gonna look like and got a sense of uh, sort of the overall shape of what that shop is gonna be. So for me, it was a big deal being able to get a first look at um, sort of the the permanent arrangement of things.
It's a reminder of where we started. It's no wonder people thought we were crazy because we really did start on a shoestring trying to make something out of nothing. And we've been in the business of proving the naysayers wrong and making our dream come true a little at a time. So we did all that pushing and shoving to get all the pieces where they belonged. Uh, I spent some time to make sure that they were secured really well, only having done just a couple of screws here and there to hold it all up. Um, I went back and put all the screws in, made sure everything was sitting exactly the way it was supposed to, and that everything was stable and permanent. Uh, and then I went ahead and cut myself a new door, uh, the door that leads from the shop into the tool room. So that, it's a little known fact, that the door that I just cut is a magic memory eraser. Uh, if you've ever worked in a shop, you know that uh, when you leave your project out on the floor for a tool that you need to add to your project, as you walk from your project into the tool room, that tool room door erases your memory and you forget what you came into the tool room for. So that's the door that I just cut. I just cut the memory eraser. And then you just go ahead and go back in the house and get a cup of coffee. And then you wander <laughs> around and you remember, you get back to your project and you're like, oh, I needed that tool. And then you go back for it and your memory gets erased again. But, <laughs> So it is. Um, uh, it's still worth it to me to have a separate space for tools. Uh, it'll keep them cleaner. It'll keep the shop neater and more functional. Uh, it's just the, the way that I know to sort of keep everything organized, is to have a room where you have the majority of your tools and even hardware collections and things like that all kind of lined up and you just have a place that you go to even if you forget what you're looking for in the process. And next is the part we've all been waiting for, the Wizard of Wood. We get to watch Nick do the joinery, which means cutting out the ways that the wood pieces fit together. So next we're moving into timber framing for the, the trusses of the shop. Um, and that all happens right out on that shop driveway so that um, when it's time to put the building up, we're able to get the backhoe in there and rig those trusses up to it and drive them into the far end of the shop, working from the back end of the shop towards the front. Um, so it was all, all of this move was sort of uh, in preparation for that next phase. Um, and I am excited to make some big sawdust uh, doing a little bit of timber framing. And we are three and a half weeks out from our frame raising. I hope you'll come back and see it. I'm Nick. Thanks for watching.
marshmallow melter. What? It's how you, you you put marshmallows um right here, then you then you squeeze it, then melted marshmallows come out. Wow.